So Matt, we're here at the Virgin Media Shorts Awards tonight. How have you enjoyed the evening? Yeah, it's been amazing. It's been amazing. It's the first year it's been in the BFI IMAX. It just feels like a huge Hollywood event. It's, it's completely changed the feel of the event, but in a good way, I think. You walk up the stairs and all the finalists get to see themselves on huge posters. They get to see adverts for their films. You know, it's, just, it's pretty special. And you won the judges as well, weren't you? The films are such a high quality. How difficult was it to do that job? It's impossible, really. I think I'm not a great, you know, I, I don't personally feel like I'm qualified to judge other filmmakers because it's such a subjective thing. But I, luckily, they kind of break it down and they don't ask you to stack them according to preference. They ask you different questions about those things and you kind of come to consensus. So it's not it's not as tricky as it otherwise would be. But I mean, the quality of the films this year was phenomenal. It really was amazing. The fact that you can show them at the IMAX cinema and they still stand up and hold their place up against huge Hollywood blockbusters is amazing. And what does a night like tonight make you remember about your own beginnings in the film world? Well, I think when I started out, it wasn't really like this. You know, I mean, the short film, we, we managed to show one short at um, the BFI, the other BFI, which was, which was one of the biggest things that happened in my life up to that point. It was, was a, a big turning point. But it was, yeah, it was, it's, it's huge, the fact that you can come from having shot something on a handicam and shot something on a, you know, an SLR to suddenly being with, with all these people, with having the BFI here, having you know, all the jury members around, and the fact that you can see your film on a huge screen like this. It must be a, a huge turning point, I think, for people. Now you've had your own film out, your own feature film out this year, Spike Island, which is brilliant. Congratulations on that. And you've also got Fleming coming up, haven't you? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, Fleming is the story of uh, Ian Fleming, who's the Bond writer, um, who was, uh, not, not many people know that he was also a spy himself. Um, he was, uh, in the Second World War, he was high up in the Navy, in the Admiralty, and he was involved in uh, well, a lot of the kind of espionage and counter espionage against the Nazis. What was interesting was that he really wanted to be a James Bond character, he wanted to be a man of adventure and he never really got the opportunity in his life. He had different kind of moments where, which he probably considered failures, even though he's now known as one of the most famous British novelists of all time. So um, that's, that's what we explore, we can explore the, those two sides of his personality, who he wanted to be and who he became. And, uh, and it's, it's, um, it's a bit of a, it's a, it's a kind of a joyride really because it's Dominic Cooper, it's him being, being Fleming but also in a way kind of being Bond. We get to play with a lot of the tropes that you know from the novels and from the films so it was, it was a lot of fun. How much fun was it as a filmmaker doing that because you're kind of getting to sort of make a bit of a Bond film aren't you? Yeah we did, I mean every day, you know, on a fraction of the time and a fraction of the budget. I mean every day, I'm, I'm imagining, not that I've ever made a Bond film, but I'm imagining that you know if you're shooting uh, Skyfall you probably spend two months planning the stunt sequence you figure it all out it's all storyboarded then you turn up and then you shoot it for a week or two weeks or whatever it is uh, and we were kind of getting up in the morning shooting our big stunt sequence and then wrapping by lunchtime because we then had to do a love scene or kind of another action scene in the afternoon so it was kind of our little indie version of Bond but it was a lot of fun you know it was great you kind of go how do you do a Nazi gun battle I, I don't know I'm just kind of you start watching other films and you go okay right and, and then suddenly you're on set but rather than shooting over the course of months, we're going to shoot it in about an hour. So what was the biggest challenge then with making Fleming? I think it was hard tonally because it's what I loved about the script, but I knew it would be a challenge was the, um, the fact that it's lots of different films. It was a similar kind of thing that we had on uh, deliberately on, on the film Sex, Drugs and Rock and Roll in that every single scene is quite different from the others. So Fleming is really, it's a kind of a grand romance, but it's also a spy film, it's a war film, but it's also quite funny. I think Dominic's um, fantastic in it. He's also impersonating someone who's kind of giving his version of Fleming, seen more or less through the prism of Bond. So, you know, it does a lot of different things and I hope tonally we've managed to navigate all those different kinds of scenes and different kinds of tones. You know, I think that's that was the main thing going into it. And I think um, if people uh, go along with the ride, then hopefully you're going to see a lot of different aspects of his personality. I cannot wait to see it. It sounds fantastic. Uh, of course, obviously, we're not pensioning off Daniel Craig yet as Bond. He's got a few more movies to go. Um, but with your experience now of getting into the world of Fleming, who do you think would be the next great Bond we could have? It's a good point. Well, it's a bit like all the furor that was going on around Doctor Who. I kind of feel like they really pushed it out there with Daniel Craig, it felt like that was quite a big leap for people to make, which seems bizarre now with hindsight because he's so good at it. But actually at the time it was very controversial and they were calling him James Blonde and all, all those kind of things. So I, I don't know, I kind of feel like, well, maybe they should take another leap of faith, try someone you know, who feels completely different. Maybe, you know, it could, could be a woman or it could be someone who's got, you know, coming from an Indian background or whatever it might be. I don't know, it might be quite fun to try that. But if they were going to go with a classic Bond, I think they should go with Dominic because he's phenomenal.